Welcome to another program of Suzanne and Vice TV. Hello, Hi. We so, have an incredible guest today. So everybody tune in. <laughs> it's like Joshua I'm, Neunstein. Right. It's a great pleasure, a great mm -hmm. honor. One of the most important contemporary artists that Israel created. Right. Uh, most important avant art artist. He's all over. He's he was born in Poland. Moja moved all piękna, over kochana. the place. Europe, Far yeah. East, Israel, then New York. Right. Then you moved to Israel. Then you came back Uzbekistan. to Europe. What? Uzbekistan. Ah. Thank you for having me on your program. I'm an avid fan. I watch it very often. I recently watched CP Trope. How do you pronounce your Trope. family? Trope? Like Saint Trope. Trope. Oh, like Saint Trope. Good. And I'm Neustein, like Freud. Ah, okay. <laughs> Only two ends from the beginning at the end, not in the middle. Right. <laughs> um, I watched your Cafe Europa. Ah. It's filmed that uh, CP made years ago. Just tell them. Yes, to I am. I'm, 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 I, I just want to tell you that I am also the DP, which I'm not. So I'm going by myself. I don't have any crew. I just go by myself. This is a film that uh, CP made about a, a cafe in Israel that the Holocaust survivors used to gather and dance. Right. Yeah. And they're not allowed to talk about the, the Holocaust. Yeah. So what I... I looked at it and thought about it, par partially for very selfish reasons. Uh, a, I'm old, and B, my family are also Holocaust survivors. Uh, but I had a much more selfish, more personal reason, is that where the film is art. That was my thinking. And in the movie that I saw in, in Café Europa, touches in a very strange way on one of the most important movies in my career that, that influenced my art more than most artists that I saw. It was more important for me to see last year in Marienbad. Oh, memory. Uh, yes. Um, and the Café Europa touches on that in any way. I have my own criticism as... as um, Silly knows I'm fairly judgmental and critical. Um, that doesn't mean I dismiss it, but it's just that I, when I care, is the film Café Europa is more about old age than about the Holocaust. I was thinking, who dealt with old age in a way that satisfied me? You know? And I went all the way to Shakespeare. There's a character right. called Falstaff. Right. In... But uh, in history plays, I think Henry the first or the fourth, which is an older man, old, fat, and ugly. And yet he's very fascinating. In fact, he's the sort of the counterpart of Henry, which is a young king, a young prince. And the way Shakespeare dealt with it was he made the old man tremendously energetic. You probably know. Right, yes, yes. Right. He made him very energetic. And he made him seem like that he wanted to give life meaning at that stage in life. Right. What is it? The, the people who dance in Café Europa, it ends with a funeral, Right, it yeah. ends with me going to, to watch mm -hmm. to visit their um, children that died in the army defending right. the country. Right. That disappointed me. Why? I was very interested in the film. Don't, don't you know? I it's think not I, any, I think I, I think I understand. It disappointed me because for the same reason that I'm disappointed in all of Israeli art. Okay. It's too Zionist. Even the critics of Zionism are too Zionist. After all, there's an important issue in Café Europa is 
what do here are these people they're civilians they're not actors no so of course it's very courageous it's it's very risky to make a film about old people because they're they're, they're living in god's waiting room and they know it yeah okay. yeah uh and I wanted to see if they have found, I think they were, I wanted to see their inside bigger than their outside. Does so, that make sense? Yeah, but but you know, this is one of the things I wanted to ask you about your art eventually. The way okay. how you externalize the internal. Um, in last year in Marienbad, right. the people are like marionettes. They're dummies. They're Yes, zombies. Right, mm -hmm. but it was, it was the most important film that has made uh, an impact on what I make in my for the rest for the next fifty years. Um, even though they're zombies, when you just said, Tippy, that they walk in the garden, and that happens. That's exactly what right. happens in last year. Yes. In Right. They walk, and there's a narrator in French. I yeah. don't speak French, but I can hear the music of the language. He's explaining the Baroque architecture in in um, in Latin Marimba. The architecture plays a very important right. part in the film. It's a beautiful and architecture is not narrative, it's the setting, it's the frame. Yeah. In fact, the frame in that movie is more important than the than the actors. Well, it's like your piece uh, when you took you have just the edges and you cut out the the in inside the kishkes. Right, right. <laughs> the kishkes. Um, okay, I I it, the the energy that that um, I was looking for is important for me. I don't know if the characters in last year in Marabad uh, could function the way they function in a different space. And yes. how can you move it to one space to another? The straw, yes. whatever uh, field, or okay. the kind of ashes. So I'm asking about your either perform no, performances or your paintings, yes. moving, especially, you know, you have such uh, performances. He mentioned the Jerusalem River project and mentioned the hay bales and about moving it to another space. Right. Uh, it's relevant. It's a very relevant question because many times people approach me. There is something called the Festival of Jerusalem and other right. events where they want me to reenact works that I've done in the 1970s. That's the previous century. Um, to do it again, if fifty years later, oh, and you know, and uh, and the the first time I did it, nobody paid me any money. This time they wanted to give me a, a uh, compensation for oh, you deserve it. Both expenses <laughs> and uh, um, particularly, for example, most recently, Jerusalem River Project, and I refused okay. because. She, she's a, a poet, a philosopher, but I don't know if she understood art the way I understand art. Well, you know, it's it's a kind and, of a high thing to achieve. Yeah, well, it takes it's, years it's, it's to understand special. art. It takes it's, years. It, it's specialized. Yes. You know, it's a special right. thing. Um, artists sometimes are like, um, like insects, like bees that have multiple right. cells, what they see, rather than a bifocal vision. Right. Um, for me, when I uh, had two partners, uh, Jerry Marks and Georgette Barrier, who did the Jerusalem River project with me, we chose a Vadi at the time, 1970s. It was on the border. Uh, right was right after the border, but it was wild. It wasn't cultivated. There were no tourists going there as they are today. 
um, and um, it was on, on of, um, I think it was it's called Vadi Etzel or Nachal Etzel. Um, it goes over to the monastery um, of um, Saint Clair. There's a monastery there, been there for a very long time, and nuns helped us make the, the work. We huh. installed fifty um, um, loudspeakers um, down to two or three kilometers, four kilometers of uh, the Vadi with the sound of water. Uh, and we needed to put wires there, multiple wires, because we we fit the water to the incline of the land. Yeah. Where the land was steep. The That's amazing, the rushing. combination of sound and picture in this case. OK, it's amazing. Well, the picture was our doing. The picture was the body itself. The, it's the right, nature. I know. Doesn't matter, the but reflect. still, but you yeah. also hear the noise of the water, yeah. I was living in Abu Tor, this is very close. There's a few, mm -hmm. meters, you know, 100 meters from Abu Tor. And um, on the other side of the valley was something called the Hill of Evil Council. Never heard of it. It's right there on the valley in Abu Tor, just a little further uh, up. I know Abu Tor um, very well. So there's called the, and it's where the United Nations was located. Okay. And for some ironic reason, that hill, long before the UN was ever created, was called the Hill of Evil Council. And that's where the UN put its headquarters. <laughs> it's very funny. Yeah. You know, you, I hear you, and then, you know, we are in the middle of a war, and you tell me about taking, you know, those uh, uh, those uh, amplifiers and connect speakers and connecting them with strings, and I see a bunch of explosives. I want to tell you something. It's not, it even then was the same situation. What happened oh, really? was two days before, before the opening of the event, the um, security people, uh, either soldiers or police, saw all these wires going from the monastery for three kilometers. I will arrest you. And they cut, <laughs> they, they wanted to arrest me, but first they cut the wires in about 30, 40 different places. And we had an opening two days later. We didn't remember to notify the police that we're doing this event. So we had to fix all these wires. They didn't arrest us. I didn't have any kind of political intention, none. This was simply a sound sculpture, which for most civilians doesn't matter at all. In the art discourse, or in the art writing, or in the art history, the dialectic of art, a sound sculpture was a step forward for for the building of the, uh, the country. It was not relevant at all. Nevertheless, nevertheless, uh, writers, uh, art critics, uh, journalists saw this as some kind of Zionist statement. Oh, really? A positive. Yeah, which is why people which tend is to why see in everything politics, right? Yeah, you can, but you don't have to. No, right. you can, right? Uh, they saw it as a very, you know, a, a river in Jerusalem, which is would be a very big <laughs> Zionist. Um, it would be to build the country and to be built by it. Yeah, right. As they say, right. live not, will he but not Yeah. Um, I want to, to use the word concept, just your take on the word concept and conceptual art, because basically you deal with this a lot. It's a very good question. It's, it's a very simple or very complicated question, depending how you want to take it. It's very uh, simple with tough answer. It's a very simple question um, with tough answer. Well, maybe before I mentioned the hay bale, so I'm going to come answer to both of those two things at this in the same in the same answer uh, i initially made the hay bales uh, i don't know it was 1973 4 i don't remember um and then it was reenacted at the tel aviv museum then it was reenacted in uh, hitler's um 
museum called, called Haus der Kunst. It was reenacted in California at the Museum of Contemporary Art, MOCA. Of course, the, my initial taking a few hay bales and tar paper, you know, that's what you put on roofs or on, a, on the yeah, highways. Sure. Uh, in 1970, Israel in 1970 was, uh, what was it, 22 year old country, it was a whole different thing than it became later on. It, it wasn't the same work. Um, in 1970, what made me do this was in a sense, a kind of conceptual landscape. What, what they made it was, my uncle, who was also an artist, a great artist, Tzvi Merovich, uh, in Haifa, I used to go visit him. And the highway from Tel Aviv to, I lived in Jerusalem, but first I'd go to Tel Aviv and then I'd go up to Haifa. I would pass the Shvela, which was full of um, orange blossoms, uh, orange orchards, and okay. this wonderful aroma, the bouquet right. in the air. You don't have it anymore. They drunk. Made you drunk. Nobody understands this today, I don't think. I do. In any case, um, you do. I know that you do. Um, I would see farms and hay bales. And I I drove a um, Vespa, Vespa in those days. Yeah. Um, and I would hear the sound of helicopters. And I would see this landscape. This wonderful landscape, and also the sound of helicopters, which is loud. What a counterpoint. Exactly. And I said, well, I guess the helicopters are there because in those days, Intifada used to attack from the sea. Yeah. And so they were guarding that border with the sea, which is also a kind of border. Um, I've made many works where I use the sea as a border. That's another conversation. Um, the counterpoint, as if you just already got the point of the farming and the landscape, the agriculture and the military culture yeah. coming together. Yes. So at Tel Aviv Museum at that time was Chaim Gamzu was the director. And I... Um, he was almost as critical as you. Oh, he was more critical. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> um, and I and I put the sound of helicopters into my interesting work at the museum wow. with the hay bales. So of course, right away, a few people would say, "Oh, you're criticizing the um, the Israeli reality." I wasn't criticizing. I was putting together something which I experienced. Right. You experienced the reality. That's all. Yeah. Yes. We yes. need more than, than and... one hour. <laughs> yeah. Go on, go on. Because I'm waiting to go on. I have a lot and then, of and then 30 years later, the Museum of Contemporary Art in uh, Los Angeles invited me to a show. It was a group show called, it was not for me alone. It was called um, um, Land Art, which was a worldwide movement. And they, he asked me to participate also to represent that land art existed in Israel. Although I did not recognize the land art of other countries the same way as I saw experienced it in Israel. I thought it was uh, gentler and, and more loving. Right. Um, and then it was shown again in the Haus der Kunst, which Hitler yeah, the architect uh, Speer. Yeah, Speer. Wow. Yeah. Nice. Right. Can you imagine what that is? Yeah, no, no, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, there is a moment, I, I sent um, you a photograph of Gidon entering into, he was visiting my right. studio. I saw it. And he entered into a frame. Yes, with his, with his raincoat, trench coat. With his raincoat. And I think it was a chair there, if I'm not mistaken. Right, the chair, mm -hmm. black. It was at that moment, it was at that moment that I felt that he understood my work. Because to answer that question, what you just asked before, 
if if those hay bales were on a painting flat and hanging on a wall yeah you would not be in it you would be looking right. at it from the outside you were at the moment yes. when he entered this he was at the moment the, he was so in it Yeshua, there's something that I would like to take you there because it's really part of your personality, the duality of inside outside, because it's about space and time. It's about Israel and diaspora. It's about inside outside. It's about boxes. It's about frames. It's about showing and hiding because sometimes you hide things. Sometimes you like to show or to invite us to be part of your process. And this duality is basically about everything that is about you. Just, yeah, just but it's so not just me. It's I believe it's the Jewish contribution to art. Uh, I don't know if we have time to talk, talk about it. You probably Tzili knows that I believe that Jews were the major contributors to modernism, more than the French, more than the English more than the Russians, more than the Americans, not as much as all of those put together, but, yeah. but of all these countries, these major contributors to modernism, Jews did more for modernism from the inside and the outside. For me, Kafka and Schoenberg are the epitome of modernism. Right. And both are Jewish, not Coincident, not by the, by by the way, outside and inside, you know, Schoenberg. Uh, I think it's Schoenberg that he has a composition that you can start either from the beginning or to the end, and then you go, no, and then we and start the, at the end, and it's the same, yeah. right? So, Schoenberg, right. Schoenberg talking about the inside and the answer, Schoenberg converted to Christianity, yeah, stupid, and then when Hitler right. rose to power, converted back to Judaism, right? Good for him, yeah, but but the inside, outside. I just have to say aside some. Sorry, sorry. It's, it's a dog, not not her. I just want to tell I you briefly, briefly, that uh, you know when I have Jewish boys, and it started when I was twenty in Ann Arbor, Michigan, when I went to school there. Uh, they came and told me, "Zippy, I'm in love with a Gentile woman." You know, is not. And I told them, "Listen, think about it. If you marry her." you reduce the contribution of the Jews to civilization. I didn't talk about religion. Until <laughs> now, I say it. So I, I think I really appreciate the contribution. But tell me something. So who do you connect to today? And let me expand it a little bit. Who do you fight today? Because it used to be in Israel, you had different groups. You know, Rafi Lavi against this and that against this. And it was kind of, a, you know, dynamic kind of, a, you know, who is better and who is more modern and who is what. Who do you relate to today? It's a very difficult question. I know. That's why I'm asking it. Who do I, I'm still in my head. I'm still fighting the battles from uh, the Jewish wars from in Israel from the 70s and the 80s. I was, I think, a um, um, fairly central figure in fighting against Rafi Lavi. Mm -hmm. I like his art, don't get me wrong. I just don't like the, um, he was very productive and positive and, and contributed to art throughout the 60s. As he got more powerful, he started becoming a a Shomer Sha'ar. Um, yeah. Sha'ar. Yeah. He started to guard whether he was guarding his power or simply what he thought was Israeli or authentic. And yeah. uh, he tried to stop conceptual and performance art. Then he joined. And then after he joined, so he not he not he, he not acknowledge that some of his paintings are conceptual. No, he first fought conceptual art and performance art. Then he joined, and then he claimed that he invented. Okay, well, that's yeah, that thing. right. Well, look, I'm sure that this, than the artistic. He was very charismatic. Um, we were of similar age. 
but he was the um, what they call in German Ur Israeli, the archi archetype of Israeliness. Yes. And I was a new immigrant. Right. Did you feel outsider? What I felt? Outsider? No, no. The Israeli institutions treated me very well. I think they gave me more credit than I deserve. Okay. Uh, okay. We could well, I came from a slightly more advanced art community to a less advanced art community of the 60s. I came to Israel in 1964. Um, and uh, I met all the... Um, um, Dominant Israeli artists of Fakim Khadashim, Zaritsky, right, Maski, yes. Uncle Merovich was. But part they of welcomed that. you, right? They welcomed you. Well, I was a young, I was the young uh, um, nephew, or as they would say, as my uncle would sometimes introduce me, a plimienik at Sa'ir mi America. So right. yeah. sometimes they welcomed me as it, it depends how they treated me. Did they treat me as and Israeli, no. To this day, there are questions about my Israeliness. When Gidon Ofra chose me to represent Israel at the Biennale in 1995, 30 years of my practice in Israel, and more in Israel than anywhere else, yeah. there was a question in the Knesset. Huh. Can you believe that? Well, yeah, I do. It's very typically I, Israeli. I yeah. do. I do. But Israel has but this you know, there was, but this is part of the duality because those days, the the country wanted everybody to be presenting Israel from the inside of Israel. Now everybody is very uh, happy to decorate themselves with Israelis outside of Israel. Tell me something: if art is, if, if what you do is a language, is it a language? You're getting your your questions are wonderful and very no, no, difficult. But it, yeah, but you no, know, I why I ask because is it, I, because I, 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 end, I take the question, I I take this language and I go as far as asking is if I look at your um art, do I see the reflection of life on you? I will this is what answer language the question does, right? I love film. I watch it. And as I just said before, it was a major influence on my art. But I don't consider film quite an art form. I'm sorry oh to say God. that. Oh, well, we have to we have to invite him again because I would like to argue. <laughs> you know, I'm very proud <laughs> of what of now. like language of film is art. Hey, so invite me again. We will. Let me just finish this statement. Okay. Um Art is 40,000 years old. That's okay. Beginning with the caves of Altamira. Right. Um, is that their name? I think in Spain. And the caves in Indonesia. You just knocked me down. License. And <laughs> I cannot <laughs> argue with that. Art has for thousands of years, never mind 40,000, in the last 3,000, 4,000 years, art has been attacked by every institution right. that exists. Right. Why, I don't know. I just know that's the fact. Moses forbade the making of art. Uh, Plato for, wanted to kick artists out from his republic. Uh, what uh, people like Franco um, and Stalin and other political leaders, they wanted to take art to bed. So, it's so powerful. It, it shot. I don't know why. Powerful. I don't know why. Powerful. Now, it, it, art is constantly being attacked, not just by political leaders. Two weeks ago, a very a friend of mine called Bianca Bosker wrote a book called Get the Picture. It's a new book, brand new book. She attacks the art. It'll be a bestseller because she attacks the art. Um, well, the question is why, but listen, don't like forget the film is art. young. Don't forget, film is a young art form, but it exactly. yeah, but it's combining all the arts. It takes all the experience of opera, theater, music, movement, right. pa painting. We'll it have, takes 
But now you hurt the language of the film. La, no, this is the language of film. Film can use all the other forms. No, it's but becoming it a integral part. Film but it has its own language. Well, yeah, we'll, out of let's do a, we can have a separate program right. on that because, right. you know, Freud wrote about art. All the philosophers, all the philosophers right. wrote about art. All of them. Everybody is an expert on art. Well, everybody wants to take art to bed, and if she refuses, which she does, they want to kill her. <laughs> they want to kill her. Film is, as as Tippy says, very young. What is it? Uh, since hundred and something. Brought, Lumiere is a, a yeah, like nine, uh, 1890, maybe. Right. Or beginning and, of the uh, century. I probably even earlier, I think. No, I yeah, think I think at the end of know. the 18th century. Lumiere and Milius, right. By the way, this is what yeah. she asked me before, you know, the, the realism and the experiment and the and the conceptual. But notice, notice film was accepted very quickly. Right. Not criticized much. Right. Right. What is it about art so threatening, and why is it about about it's film intimidating? So... It's intimidating. You need that... to understand the language, and you it's are more understanding. Yeah, way. a picture is more intimidating than a movie. A, a, a movie is more communicative than a picture. The True. question will be, I think, in the future to see how movies would stand versus art right. over time. Right. We need some time. To be patient and look at it. Maybe we should finish. finish. We have to finish. We have to finish soon. Maybe we should finish. I don't remember. If this was the art that you did, this line, one line. Yes. Sure. Thank you, Siki. Wonderful. It, you, you know, do you want me uh, that I, my mother didn't finish eighth grade from Poland, small place in Poland. Um, so I, I this is the house I grew up, and you know I didn't see. Never mind. Do you want me to understand the meaning of this one line? Okay. Not only do I expect you to understand the meaning, but uh, um, there was an art critic in Jerusalem. I liked her very much, but she was always upset. She was Russian. Um, Miriam Tal. She was a lovely woman. She kept pencils in her hair. Oh, really? Um, and she, she went to see the Jerusalem River Project. Uh, she's in that, one of the pictures I sent to you. Um, and she saw, I did a simple drawing. Let me explain the drawing. The explanation is already the answer. A line that goes to the middle of the page and then continues on the other side of the page. And she um, saw this and got very upset. Very upset, you know. You'd think I, 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 we, uh, that I was married to her, and I, and I uh, betrayed her with another woman. Yeah. Uh, um, I said I was young, quite young. I was in my twenties, right? And I said, Miriam, what is your problem? Why are you so upset? Ignore it. It's a altogether. It's seventy centimeters. You know, it's 20, 30 inches. Forget about it. He says, Lama Why is I that hard? I can answer you know? her. I can answer in a way because when I saw it, I understood what I really like in films too. What's outside frame sometimes is more important than what's inside mm -hmm. frame. Okay. So, this is what I got. So I said, to, I explained to her, this is a line, this is a drawing on two sides of, of a page. So, so, there, so she said, there are many drawings on two sides of the page. I said, no. All drawings that are on two sides of a page are two separate drawings. Right. Just like in a book, there's text on one side and there's text on the other, but it's not right. the same text. No, right. But you're sure there's something very deep about it and not everybody, you know, goes to this journey very deep inside. And they, they, they have different ways and different tools in order to express it or translate it or they relate to something else and it's also something that you need either to get used to it or to accept it but but you have to go deep and you have to go deep inside in yourself too it's a it's a very special journey and not everybody can take it but you oh, can take it anyway true, but, but, yeah but no. anyway we have to finish oh my god I, 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 again I'm, 
<laughs> Your what? It was, I'm not that interested for the work to be interesting. I know, I understand very well. I understand very well. I know if I care with people like my work or not. I'm not in a popularity contest. You know, I remember sitting with Moshe Gershuni, which is a wonderful friend of mine and uh, a totally different kind of artist. I don't even know why we called the same profession. It's a whole different thing. Uh, he said to me- of this profession. He said to me, he wants to be the king of Israeli art. And I said, I would never want to represent a whole country. An artist that speaks in the name of a whole country is a politician, is not an artist. I shouldn't say I barely Adam. Represent like Adam. Also a friend of mine. You mean Adam Baruch? No. No, no, no. Agam, no. Adam Baruch was great. Agam. 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 Yeah. This is what he did in our beloved Square Dizengoff. Agam this, wanted to be the king of Israel. Yeah, but also he, he destroyed our childhood because, you know, we grew up not in him. Square Dizengoff. Not the one who put Square Dizengoff, and now they put their, you know, the fountain with music. It's not his fault because somebody chose it. Anyway. So, um, but, but, there, you know, there is more and we'll talk more. We need to thank you for coming. That was thank really. You, a, I hope you awesome. enjoyed it, like us. I, mean, I enjoyed it. it we touched. We started on so many conversations. I know. I know. That, because, um, we, because we wanted to milk from you everything we can, and it's we important. She cannot finish. She cannot finish. Yeshua, bye. Thank you, bye, everybody. Bye.